Welcome to the Streamside Trees in the Classroom program. My name is Krista Hodges and I'm the Education Manager for the Dan River Basin Association. Our program, our Streamside Trees in the Classroom program, is in partnership with Philpot Lake, the Army Corps of Engineers, and Mr. Ernie Shepard. Yes, I'm uh, with the Corps of Engineers at Philpot Lake, as she has said, uh, and my job is basically water safety, but uh, with the partnership, I also help Krista with the planning of the stick. So the Streamside Trees in the Classroom program has been around since 2012. We started the program on a small scale with just a few classrooms and a few counties involved. And then in 2015, when we received a transportation grant, we expanded the program to include hundreds of students throughout Patrick County, Henry County, Martinsville, and Franklin County. Now, if you guys are new to the program and you've never heard about the program before, we want to tell you a little bit more about it. So, with Streamside Trees in the Classroom, uh, one of the important things about planting the trees along the stream is why we do this. What exactly is the importance of planting these trees along streams? One of the main reasons is for protection of our drinking water. These rivers and streams are a natural resource. You know, they're not unlimited in the amount. The water that we have here now on Earth is the same water that's been here many years ago. So we need to make sure that we protect our water. The only way that it goes through, you know, is through a water cycle. And so if we don't protect it, the water is just going to end up being polluted. And so by planting the, the trees along the stream, we are creating a canopy over the waterway that protects our water. It protects the water temperature that helps uh, the wildlife and it helps the macroinvertebrates and other organisms that are in the stream. And then it also creates stream bank uh, stabilization. So the roots that are in the, in the trees here and the bank it, it creates them, you know, it allows them to be stable, and so that way it protects the rivers and streams from the erosion that can happen when the trees are not present. Now, I work for the Army Corps of Engineers, and one of the major jobs of the Army Corps of Engineers is water control and flood control, and we're able to do that once a dam is built, we can release the water uh, pretty much the way we want to. Unlike nature, when a storm comes, tons and tons of water are released from the clouds in the form of rain, and then a stream such as the one that you're looking at behind us, uh, which is mild today and peaceful and calm, can become raging uh, floodwaters and with dangerous uh, currents in it. So what we do at the core, we control the water flow. So here, we can't control it, so we have to make sure that, as Crystal was saying, that we plant trees along the banks in order to hold the dirt and the other plants in place so that they don't get washed down this creek or river or whatever, wherever you live. So if you're new to the Streamside Trees in the Classroom program, we want to tell you a little bit about how it works and how the trees are delivered to the classroom. Usually we do the trees deliveries in September and then we do the planting days in October. So usually we get a list of you know, the students that are involved in the classroom, a number, and we know how many students are in there, so that way we know how many trees to bring to your classroom. So usually we do about one tree per three to four students. And so uh, when we deliver the trees, Mr. Ernie Shepard delivers them, and I'm gonna let him tell you now a little bit more about what that includes. Okay, thank you. Uh, when we come to your school, we usually bring the sticks in a container that you see on this table. 
and they will have the sticks already in them in water and you are going to put your name what? yeah she was saying usually it's groups of three or four students and you'll be putting your name on the jar so you can keep up with it and, and be able to watch it each day and watch it grow and uh, if it needs water to get it and then after that we take a question and answer period where you can uh, ask us anything that uh, you don't know or, or what you're concerned about in growing the trees and that might be whether do I put it in the sun do I put it in the shade do I keep it warm you have different questions that we can answer for you and also um, once we've brought the trees into your classroom we've taken the question and answer session then I do a short presentation on the uh, fourth grade federal pass and this is for fourth graders and this year will also be for last year's fifth graders because the program was canceled out due to, to the COVID virus. So we'll be talking about that and the ability of how you can get your free uh, federal card to go into the federal facilities with your family and not have to pay a fee. So before we talk about what exactly the Every Kid Outdoors Pass includes, I want to tell you a little bit about the trees and how that's going to work in the classroom. Now, first of all, you know, if you get them delivered to your classroom from the Spring Set Trees in the Classroom program from DARBA or Philpott Lake, um, usually we order them from another location, from a nursery, and they uh, ship them to us. So if we do that, when you get them in the classroom, like Ernie said, you'll just put them in the jar with some water in there. We actually use a rooting hormone on them to help the trees grow. Now these are black willow cuttings, and they are very, very easy to propagate. They do really well in just water. And then after about 10 days, you should start seeing some root growth. And then you and the students can actually measure the root growth. You can journal their progress. And usually at the end of a four-week period, that's about how long you have them in the classroom, after about four weeks, that's when we plant them. And at that point, they should actually have root growth on them and limb and leaf growth on them. So they'll be nice, full trees. Right now they look like sticks, but they will look like trees by the time you guys bring them to your planting day. If you are ordering your own trees, or if you're going out to cut some black willow cuttings, I want to tell you a little bit about how to do that. First of all, we will supply you with the nursery info if you want to order your own trees. But if you are going to propagate your own trees, you're going to go out and cut them yourself, you need to make sure you have permission for wherever the black willow tree is located to get onto the property and to cut the tree itself. But you want to use um, usually growth that is one to two years old on the tree. You don't want to get the old growth when you do your cutting. So you're going to look for limbs that are about two to three feet in length. So you can see here that I've got another one that's a little bit longer. And you're, you're going to go ahead and cut these. I have, you know, a nice little easy tool that you can use to cut these off. When you cut them, you're going to want to cut them at an angle on the bottom. And then after you cut your two to three foot length tree or limb, that's when you're going to want to cut them down into about one foot length sections. Okay, so if you are cutting your own black willow um, limbs, making your own cuttings for your classroom, then I want to tell you a little bit more about how to do that. Like I was saying, you would normally cut the limbs that are about two to three feet in length. And then when you get those, you want to make them about one foot cuttings, okay? So you can see this one, I mean, you wouldn't get... Um, three cuttings out of this one so I'm probably just going to do two 
But if that's the case, that's not a problem. You'll just have some that may be a little bit longer than a foot. So to be able to do that, you can have your little cutters here. What you want to do to cut them, you want to submerge the bottom of the tree in a bucket of water and you want to cut the end of it at a diagonal. And when you cut it down in the water, that helps the water to be pulled up into the shaft of the, the cutting here. And that helps the tree for survival. So we'll go ahead and do that with this one. So now we cut it at an angle under the water. And then the top part, we're just going to go about a foot on this one. And we're going to cut it flat for the top of this cutting. So that's one cutting flat on the top, angled at the bottom. You would then take it and we've got our rooting hormone here. You can get this at Lowe's. It's only about three dollars for a little container of this. And if you get one container, it's going to last you for quite some time because it's a lot in here. And it doesn't take much on the little cuttings. So you'll then just put your, um, your angled cutting down in there, just get the excess off, tap it a little bit, and then you will put it in your jar with some water. So the jars only need to be about, about half to three-fourths full, and then you can put it down in there just like that. And then the other one, the other piece that we have to the cutting, you'll do the same thing because it has the flat bottom on there from where you cut the first one. You will submerge that in the water and do your angled cutting on that one. And then you can just make sure the top has a flat top on it. And then you can put it in your rooting hormone. Tap off the excess and then put it in your in your jars. Now, what you would do for your students, you would take one jar per, like your three to four students, your team of students. So you only need one cutting per jar. Okay, all right, so once you have your cuttings in your jars, you will put them in a window seal in your classroom. You don't want to put them next to a heater or anything like that. You just want to put them in the sunlight and let them sit. And you should check them, you know, every couple of days and make sure you have at least half a jar of water in there and your students can fill them up um, back to about the three-fourths level. So they'll sit in the window for about, you know, three to four weeks. Usually after four weeks, that's the time that you want to plant them. But during that time, your students, again, can check the growth on the roots. They can uh, journal that, monitor the growth, record it, use a ruler to see, you know, how much the growth has changed over a period of days. And then, like I said, on your planting day, you want to, if you're doing this on your own, you want to find an approved location that you have um, access to to do your planting day. You have permission to be on. So that way, um, you know, if the tree, if the students want to come back and visit the trees, they can do that. We usually use public access places such as the parks, um, anywhere like that would be great. We also encourage on your planting day for you to uh, have lunch at the park, give some, the students some time to be outside and enjoying the resources. Uh, just have free time. You can even plan activities on your planting day. Have some partners come in such as DARBA or the Army Corps of Engineers or maybe Soil and Water to come in and talk about some different programming activities that they have available related to water quality protection, water safety, anything like that that might enhance your students experience on their planting day. So when the students plant their trees they only need to just they can use a shovel to do it they just need to make a small hole in the ground uh, they don't have to dig out a big hole to be able to do that. They can use a dibble bar if anyone has those that you know of. Or again, you can just use a shovel to do that. Just make a small insert into the ground. And then you can go ahead and put the, the tree down in there. Just make sure you cover the roots up all the way. 
just make sure you cover those lightly stomp on the ground around your cutting and then just make sure you water it you can use the water that's left over in the jar or you can even get a bucket of water whatever you have access to also once you have gone to your location to plant your stick your tree then uh, what we do here at the uh, different parks we go to we put um, a sign on a stake and this one says black willow project this is a live plant please let it grow so nobody will come up and start pulling them up or somebody that might be weed eating in maintenance department and cut your tree down and then since you've already put your name on the jar we'd like to have your name uh, the different students however many three or four of you that it is maybe uh, the school you're from and uh, attach that to the stake and then uh, you can come back and watch the growth of your stick um, next year or anytime during the year that you want to come and look at it to make sure it's doing okay. Um, it may be in the summertime and it might need a little water so you could uh, give it a little bit of water. But it's your project and something that you can enjoy watching it grow. Uh, one of my jobs uh, with the Corps of Engineers, of course, in my major job there is water safety. So be sure you wear your life jackets when you're out on the water. Uh, another one of my uh, major jobs is to get the information out about the eco card, every kid outdoors card that was started back by President Obama to get students and their parents and family out into the parks and he came up with a card much like a credit card where you can take this card with you and you can go into a federal park and get you and your family in free now in order to get this card there are several ways you can get it uh, you can go online to America the Beautiful and then scroll down until you come to every kid outdoors and click on that and it will give you information to get a voucher and this is an example of the voucher here right here and you're to cut that out and then take it to a federal agency such as Philpot Lake uh, Booker T Washington uh, place or any other federal park and trade your voucher in for this heavy duty plastic card. Now this card is good until August 31st of 2022. Once you get your card you have that much time to go to any federal park and use it. And it will also give you information on the website uh, to the different places where you can use it. It's not just in Virginia, it's all across the country. So we usually come into your schools and I'll be glad to come to your school if you will email me or call me uh, at Philpot Lake at area code 276-2703 and ask for Ranger Ernie Shepard. I'll be glad to talk with you about coming to your school and uh, presenting these cards to you rather than going through the website. So uh, just give me a call and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.